Citizen Sleeve! Hello, I am Citizen Sleeve, and welcome to my spoiler-free review of Quantic Dreams, Detroit Become Human. Now, those who know me know I've had a few issues with prior David Cage games, from bad plot lines to bad characters, bad dialogue, bad animation, and generally forcing me to do tedious household tasks like cleaning my flat in Beyond Two Souls. Thanks for that, Mr. Cage. But, I tried the demo. I love adventure games with permeations depending on your narrative choices, so I thought, yes, let's give this one a go. Become Human is a third-person adventure game where the choices you make throughout alter the narrative in very drastic ways. It's set in a future dystopian Detroit where androids are everywhere. And they're essentially used for slave labour, to do the menial tasks that most people don't want to do in their lives. Some, however, start breaking their programming and becoming more human, and they're known as deviants. It could be a prequel to Blade Runner, really? <laughs> but that's the general gist of the setup of the game. Now, you play three central protagonists who are all androids. The first that you play, in-game as well, is Connor played by Brian Deschart, and he's basically sent by Cyberlife, the company who makes all these androids, to track down these more sentient androids, these deviants, because they are breaking from Cyberlife's programming. He's got a partner in Hank, who's a real grizzled, old-school, world-weary detective. Been there, seen it, done it, and there's something in his past in relation to androids that we don't know yet, that we discover through the course of the narrative and their relationship. And he's brilliantly played, absolutely brilliantly played, by Clancy Brown, who I love anyway. Uh, the second is Kara, who's voiced by Valerie Curry, and she was actually the original voice and face of the Kara demo back in 2012, which is where this game originated from. And she is a maid, who's there to help a young girl and protect her from what is a very abusive father. So it's a very interesting dynamic within that situation. The final character we play is Marcus, played by Jesse Williams. And he looks after Lance Henriksen's Carl, this old and quite ill painter who is trying to make Marcus think, actually actively trying to get him to break from his programming. Let's talk graphics. And they're rather bloody good. So straight away, the facial animations, the capture process that they've used for these characters is amazing. You can see every little detail and subtlety within their facial expressions, when they speak, when they're re responding to another character. All the little facial tics and reactions are absolutely sublime to, to look at. Animation, for the most part, is pretty fantastic. Even in the cutie-type cutscenes, the motion is really quite nice and the effects that we see as well. Particle systems, uh, weather effects, lighting, it's all very, very high-end, and it really sets a lot of these scenes beautifully well. Now, there are some issues. We still, still, after I don't know how many David Cage games, have really quite awkward walking animations. And I'm not sure why they haven't solved that problem yet. And that also ties into controls, which we'll talk about in a moment. But overall, the environments, the performance capture, the level of polish in this game is exceptionally high. It really is. So gameplay. Now, it's a typical mix of what you'd expect from a David Cage game. You have the dialogue options, uh, often timed, where you will make your decision and then move on. Every android can look at a certain situation or scene, look for clues, identify them, reconstruct that scene, and then fast forward and rewind to work out what actually happened. And that's a really nice little gameplay mechanic. I, I enjoy that, particularly with Connor, because his character is more focused on being a detective, which is very, very cool in-game. You then have the QTEs for the action sequences, and they're okay. Some of them can be very awkward, though. There was a bit towards the end when some of the QTEs were making me claw my fingers around the game controller like I was trying to contort myself into pressing three buttons at the same time, which wasn't very natural. And then there's the actual moving around the, the environments, and that can be clunky. And this again comes back to traditional David Cage game problems, 
And one of those is, you always feel like you're controlling a Resident Evil 1 character with a huge turning circle, which is ridiculous because you're a human being stroke android in the game, so you should be able to just turn on the spot. But for some reason, just like every other David Cage game, those straight-up movement controls to traverse the world are still quite annoying. One other major problem I had with gameplay, and that was invisible walls. So you'd be wandering around different environments, particularly outside, and you'll think, oh, I'll go over there or nip into this area. And then, almost like a, a futuristic police warning can't go this way sign, appears in front of you and blocks your path so you can go no further. And that is something which quite clearly can break your immersion within the game. There are also a few moments in the game when you can do almost precognition. So you'll look at a certain action sequence or way to manoeuvre a particular obstacle. You'll plan it first, each move, and then you'll engage that move set, and you'll move through the environment according to what you've already planned, which is really quite cool. On the whole, though, I think it plays quite well. It's got an interesting mixture of different types of mechanics that work quite well together. For a David Cage game, there is only minimal cleaning of or doing menial task type stuff. So you will, at the beginning, do a little bit of that with Marcus and a bit more of that with Kara. But as the narrative continues and you break past that, all those menial things you often do in cage games dissipates, which is very, very good. Okay, so let's talk about the narrative again, but without spoilers. The overall narrative is pretty good. It's quite derivative, so it borrows heavily in trope and thematic terms from all kinds of sci-fi source material, particularly films. And it's quite overt about a lot of things. A lot of plots and themes are shoved very clearly in your face and don't have much subtlety. So that is a bit of a complaint. I would have preferred to have had things a bit more subtle, allow the player to more deeply engage with those themes without them being quite so obvious everywhere. I like the characters for the most part. I especially like the dynamic between Hank and Connor. I think that's very, very cool. It's very well balanced and very, very nicely performed. And your choices really do matter. All of the main protagonists can die at various stages throughout the game. And other choices you make can have dramatic effects on other characters and how they see you. And I love that. And you can see it in the spider chart that we are given, which outlines every different permutation from that particular chapter of the game. And that's another thing that we haven't seen in a Quantic Dream game before. And what it does is, it allows the butterfly effect to become very clear. You can see the branching bits, you can see what choices you've made and where you could have made a different choice. And a lot of these scenes or chapters have a huge amount of choices. There are a few hit and miss moments here and there, but by and large, the narrative is pretty strong and there are some really good moments. The narrative becomes ever more complex as we get to the final third of the game and as each of the major protagonists' plot lines in some way interweave or overlap. Not entirely always, but they do. And that's where I think the game really comes to life. Because you've got these disparate characters who are starting to have somewhat similar ideologies about being an android, about breaking their programming, about being free, and all these different themes. But each of them does it in a different way. Connor is an android hunting androids. So in, in itself, that's a dichotomy. But then you have Marcus, who is being taught by this rich artist guy to become free, to think outside his, his box, as it were. And then Kara who is breaking from her programming to protect someone, to protect a child. Each of these different types of character all weave towards that big narrative conclusion exceptionally well. A further way in which your choices affect the overall outcome of the narrative is public opinion. So obviously in this world, some folks are on the Android side, a lot of people are not on the Android side, and depending on the way you handle certain situations, whether you handle it peacefully, violently, or a variation thereof, public opinion can sway, and you'll see that permeate throughout various parts of the game itself. Music and sound. Thank you. 
We're wasting our time interrogating a machine. We'll get nothing out of it. You'd always try roughing it up a little. After all, it's not human. Androids don't feel pain. You would only damage it, and that wouldn't make it talk. Deviants also have a tendency to self-destruct when they're in stressful situations. Okay, smartass. What should we do then? I could try questioning it. <laughs> what do we have to lose? Go ahead. Suspect's all yours. Music is relatively good. It's produced by three different composers. Each of them worked on one of the different protagonists' individual soundtrack. And they're all serviceable. They all work well. They all fit into the dystopian nature of the narrative and the aesthetic. But they're not amazing. They don't stand out particularly well. And there's no major iconic themes that I can particularly remember after finishing the game. The soundscape, on the other hand, is absolutely fantastic. Subtlety throughout, amazing separation in surround sound terms, effects really appearing and sounding audibly where they should be coming from, and they work very well. A lot of the effects have a great deal of weight to them, and they support the on-screen diegetic action in a really wonderful way. It gives everything weight and a sense of belonging in this world. Finally, voice. And it is very, very good indeed. You have got Jesse Williams. You've got classic actors like Clancy Brown and Lance Henriksen who all lend their voices, characterizations, and performances so very, very well. And I've said prior, the relationship that Hank has with Connor, that duality between the two, between one who has this hang-up about androids that we don't know about yet and Connor who's trying to understand this human being the way he perceives the world the decisions he makes and why in particular those performances are just absolutely fantastic and I can't congratulate the actors enough for getting that amount of nuance through those physical actions and their voice work one final little nice cool touch I've noticed is the menu so there is essentially model Kara, but not Kara, who talks you through the menu and what you can do in the UI and things that you can change. But then as you come back to the game and start it again, you start realizing that she is actually interacting with you. She's commenting on the way you've been playing. She then starts asking you questions that you have to answer. And that's all I'll say about it. It's just a really neat touch and possibly what I'm going to have to do for a talking title screens what once I manage to capture all the different variations of her particular dialect with you as a player through the menu. So then, should you buy it? I would say yes. I think David Cage and Quantic Dream have finally made a game. It's not without its problems, but finally made an adventure game that makes good on a lot of the promises that prior Cage games have not. A strong and cohesive aesthetic that really sets up this dystopian future very effectively. Some amazing effects. And if you want to see those or play those live, go and play the hostage demo. And just wait till you get outside and you see the tarpaulin move in the wind with the helicopter of, above it. And the water coming up from the swimming pool. And the facial animations within the hostage situation. It's got amazing performances. It's got a pretty damn good narrative. It's got an exceptional amount of choices. Apart from the somewhat clunky movement controls, the slightly overbearing QTE presses at times, and those invisible walls, I think this is a damn fine adventure game with an excessive amount of narrative choice. And that is exactly what you want. So well done, Quantic Dream. Talk to me in the comments. Did you enjoy Detroit? Did you like its narrative choices? Did you find any problems with the plot? Did you like the characters? Did you have any favorite ch chapters or moments or scenes? And who was your favorite performance in the whole game? For me, got to be Clancy Brown as Hank. Fantastic. 
Thank you so much for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Maybe even consider subbing to the channel. If you didn't like the video, hit that dislike button. That's what it's there for. Not everybody likes everything. Take it easy. I shall see you very soon. Citizen Slave.